Hills were the only ones fighting for the truth of what happened to John O'Keefe. And me and my family and my attorneys and my team have marshaled every resource to get to the truth. It just feels like no one else wants it. And Karen, just to be clear, you didn't do it. Team have marshaled every resource. We know who did it, Steve. We know. And we know who spearheaded this cover-up. You all know. Yes, we do. And no, she didn't do it. No, she didn't do it. This is an innocent woman. She didn't do it. I tried to save his life. Yeah. I tried to save his life at 6 in the morning. I was covered in his blood. I was the only one trying to save his life. Why'd you admit to it? He didn't, she didn't admit to it. She didn't admit to anything close to that. Nothing close to that. And you should know that. I was like three or four times she said it to no, no, she didn't. that's not true. She asked a question. It makes absolutely no sense. That is the Commonwealth grasping at straws. If it walks like a duck and talks like a duck, it's a duck. We have the eight letters. We've seen them. We've read them. We are using them. The genie cannot be put back in the bottle. Yeah, LTL true crime. We going deep in the dark. Yeah. Yeah, peeling back the layers, expose the hidden mark oh, yeah. From the streets to the alleys where the secrets lie Getting into minds of the wicked, no alibi LTL true crime unraveling the web of evil No stone left unturned, we diving to the prime Yeah, we digging up the dirt, bringing justice to the crime LTL true crime unveiling dark realities every time yeah, LTL true crime, we going deep in the dark yeah. Peeling back the layers, exposed to him more oh, yeah. From the streets to the alleys where the secrets lie Get his things in mind, something wicked, no alibi yeah. 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 LTL true crime, I go We go get live in the show, but then I'm not talking about it, it is full Look at the past in your world No time to wait your life I picked down true crime, don't know what dark realities every time. Sunday morning, everybody, and happy St. Patrick's Day. Uh, it is March 17, 2024, and it is my birthday. I have lived another year on this great earth, <laughs> and um, wow, I cannot believe, and I'll let everybody know I am 46 years old today. I cannot believe that I am 46 years old today. Um, it's just been such an incredible life and an incredible ride. And I have to say the last year of my life here on YouTube has been pretty fucking awesome. <laughs> I have to say, uh, especially the last two months or so has been really awesome. Uh, I've, I've met, I mean, I think just going through YouTube itself, um, over the last year, I, I would even say maybe the last two years I've come across some really incredible people. Uh, that have come into my life and I've made some amazing and strong friendships with uh, all of you and other creators on this platform too. And I, I think that I've had the opportunity uh, to have some really amazing guests on this platform. And I wouldn't be able to do any of that without all of you, the subscribers, the, men, the members, the supporters of LTL uh, True Crime. And I really, really do appreciate that. Um, but really, the last two months have just been pretty amazing. Uh, so much good fortune has come into my life. 
um, because of YouTube. And I'm now having the opportunity in two weeks to step into an actual working studio that's going to be mine. I'm going to get it out of this corner in my bedroom and get it into an actual full out working studio. And uh, it's been a crazy journey so far, you know, um, and I really need to start planning it out and uh, and, and really looking to see what I'm going to do in that space. I have not only um, ideas for my studio, but some other ideas as well that I think that's going to stretch beyond uh, what we have here. So I'm really looking forward to the opportunity. And look, I just got to give it my best shot and see what's going to happen. And, um, you know, that's all you can do. I'm going for it. I really am going for it. This is something that I feel that I want to do. This is something that I want to do for the rest of my life. And if I can uh, help all of you as the audience to educate and bring, um, you know, stories forward or have a little fun every now and then, it's what I want to do. And if I can help others, that's what I wanted to use this platform for. And like I said, it may not just be a true crime channel forever. Uh, I probably will pivot and find my way. That's one thing that you need to do here in YouTube is always find your way on this platform. So my friends, thank you. I see tons of happy birthdays. Thank you so much. If you want to help L LTL True Crime, you can. My affiliate, uh, my links are going to be at the top of the chat there. You can donate through Cash App, or if you want to send, uh, buy me a coffee, you can do that as well. But we'll get into the heart of the show here. So uh, a couple of videos that I wanted to go through. Jennifer Coffendaffer actually posted, uh, I think 24 hours ago, kind of a response to what her thoughts are on the John O'Keefe, Karen Reed case. And I find it funny that she continues to uh, go on in the direction that she's going uh, with this case. I mean, it's almost embarrassing uh, just what we heard in the last hearing. Uh, and more information has come forward, especially with the federal investigation. And I'll play something to me that, uh, play something for all of you that really is a sticking point in the Karen Reed case. Uh, when, I, when I saw this come forward, and it actually confirmed a piece of information, which we knew all along, but now a federal investigation is confirming uh, that it didn't happen. Uh, and we'll talk a little bit more about that as we get in. Also, uh, Turtle Boy did a spot on a Law and Crime Network and uh, had to get out there and get all the correct information out there because it looked like everybody on that panel had no idea what the fuck was going on. So I want to uh, pull that up first and then we'll get to Coffin Daffer in the end. I'm going to try to keep the stream about an hour and a half today. I do have lots of plans for my birthday uh, and I'm looking forward to that. So thank you. I see all the happy birthdays in there. If I took forever to pull them up, it would take a very long time uh, to uh, go through, but I appreciate it. Uh, I'm going to pull this up. Elian has been a member and a supporter of LTL True Crime. For the last nine months since his happy birthday all the way across the pond i appreciate that and i appreciate all the birthday wishes it's it's really awesome uh all right so let's pull up this video from uh tb on lauren uh lauren crime network they have a spot that's called crime fix and uh it's the three shocking developments in uh the woman accused of murdering cop boyfriend with her suv so let's go through this here the car didn't hit him and he wasn't hit by the car New revelations as Karen Reed makes a last ditch effort to get the case, the case against her thrown out weeks before she's scheduled to go on trial for killing her boyfriend, Boston police officer John O'Keefe. There was no fight. There was no dog attack. I'm Anjanette Levy. Welcome to Crime Fix. Karen Reed's trial is scheduled to begin in April, but she's hoping the case doesn't make it that far. Although I'm telling you right now, it will. What she's asking the judge to Thank do you. to throw out the indictment is something that rarely happens. Right. Reed claims she's the victim of a sweeping police conspiracy, a frame up for the death of her boyfriend, Boston police officer John O'Keefe. Her lawyer, Alan Jackson, says O'Keefe's fellow police officers and other witnesses lied to the grand jury, so the indictment should be tossed. That presentation was, pa was packed with lies, known lies by the investigators. And the omissions and the manipulations and deceit by the very people that are supposed to be the ones that we in the community can trust. Reed claims she didn't hit O'Keefe with her Lexus SUV and leave him to die in the snow, but that Boston police officers beat him up inside the house where he was found and that a vicious dog attacked him and that everyone lied to frame her. 
We have been saying since September 16th, 2022, in lengthy motions that we filed before this court and filed with the Commonwealth, there is a conflict. You're not investigating the conflict. That conflict was never described to the grand jurors. I think it's Jackson. I mean, I love watching Jackson, and I think it's been a real joy, I mean, under these terrible circumstances to see his work. Um, you know, watching back from May to where he is now uh, with this has been an absolute pleasure to watch and just how much he digs in, gets that information, gets the facts out there on the record. I don't know why. I just don't know why this charade is continuing. I don't get it. And I'm sure you all have been sitting there uh, saying to yourself as well, why is this continuing? Why is this going on? I mean, it's almost every hearing now that we're having leading up to this bogus trial, you know, more and more. I mean, if you don't get it by now uh, to see what's going on here, I don't know what to tell you. You know, the deniers, uh, the trolls will keep going on and just saying, oh, well, it's it's just what the defense is saying. You know, there's really I mean, the, the the stuff that that Jackson said in the last hearing, especially about uh, Karen hitting uh, the the experimentation of Karen. Uh, of the the individual, the independent individual uh, that was hired by the FBI with three PhDs did the accident reconstruction scene and said it is impossible in his judgment that Karen Reed did not hit uh, John O'Keefe and John O'Keefe uh, was not hit by Karen Reed's SUV. It was inconsistent with the injuries. I, I, I don't know what else to tell you. I mean, so now you have to default and say, where did this happen? How, where did those injuries happen? Where is the default location now? 34 Fairview. I just don't know why people continue to deny this. I mean, this was probably the most powerful hearing that Karen Reed has had in her case so far because we have the federal investigation now. We have the information that has come out from the feds. Uh, uh, Madeline Wynn with a $5 happy birthday. Thank you so much. I really do appreciate that. All right, let's keep playing on. And here. we've been rebuffed at every single turn. The prosecutor vehemently denies that Karen Reed is the victim of any type of conspiracy. Their testimonies are right. largely consistent with the defendants uh, making declarative statements that she did it. Uh, not a question mark at the end, but clear uh, definitive statements on scene. Now, one thing that's a little unique about this case and frankly pretty odd is the fact that the U.S. attorney is investigating John O'Keefe's death and no one really seems to know why. A federal grand jury has heard testimony, and the U.S. Attorney's Office in Massachusetts isn't saying when the investigation started or why and what the status of it is. I've asked, and I was told, no comment. One of Reed's lawyers, Alan Jackson, said new information was revealed during the federal grand jury that helps his client. The federal investigators hired, independent of us, we had no idea and independent of the Commonwealth, hired a professional reconstruction. Right here, this is that moment. This is this for me was like, wow. <laughs> you know, and you can see us when uh, me, TB, and Glare were uh, organically watching this on the day of the hearing, our mouths dropped. We were like, what? <laughs> what? I mean, this is what we've been saying all along. And now this federal independent investigator that had nothing to do with the Commonwealth, nothing to do with the defense has stepped in and said, it did not happen. Did not happen. Instructionist, three PhDs to look into exactly this, this issue. Did Karen Reed's car, did her SUV make contact with John O'Keefe? And their conclusion to a person was his injuries were inconsistent with the damage on the car. The, in, the damage on the car was inconsistent with having been made, having made contact with John O'Keefe's body. In other words, the car didn't hit him and he wasn't hit by the car. Now the prosecutor didn't address that claim the other day, but maintains the case should move to trial and that Reed killed John O'Keefe and no one else. 
In a new development, Massachusetts State Police say lead detective Trooper Michael Proctor is under investigation. But the I, I want to just let me know. Let me know in the chat. When that bomb dropped from Jackson, when that bomb dropped from Jackson, let me know how many of your mouths in the chat literally just dropped and hit the floor. If your mouth dropped and hit the floor, that confirmation from Jackson, type a one in the chat. Let me see it. Type those ones in the chat. If it didn't, then type a two, a type of two. Let's keep playing Agency through. isn't saying why or if it's related to a specific case, only issuing the following statement. We have opened an internal investigation into a potential violation of department policy by Trooper Michael Proctor. Trooper Proctor remains on full duty. Joining me to discuss the latest in this controversial case are two people who've been following it. One very, very closely. He's Aiden Carney. You probably know him as Turtle Boy if you've been following this case. And Daryl Cohen, he's a former... No, I'm so glad. I'm so glad for TV. And you can see it on the day that we did this hearing when I was up on the panel with TV, Glare, and just the overwhelming emotions on him, on his face, in his body language. I mean, he is just like everything that I've been saying, everything that I've been putting out there is the truth. It's now being confirmed by the highest authority, the feds. You know, it's now being confirmed. You can see the level of emotion on his face, just being overwhelmed and saying, Everything that I've done, everything that I've done here to sacrifice and put into this, it's now all being confirmed. It's on the record. It's confirmed. I've been telling the truth all along, and he has. He's been telling the truth all along. He has opened the gateway for the truth in this case. In, in, the, in the realm of independent journalism, he has opened the gate to allow people to look in. And I always use the Wizard of Oz theory in all of this, you know, pulling back the curtain, exposing the wizard for what, what he truly is. And he, you know, I think in that movie, if I think back, it's been quite a while since I've seen it, he said, um, what did they say? Something like, oh, we thought you were this evil man. He's like, no, I'm, I'm not really this person. You know, the, the, the lies shrink down to a, to a small uh, size when the, when the truth can look in and peel back that curtain, you know, if it wasn't for TV, you know, where, where would this all be? Would, would, would Karen Reed be in jail right now? Probably, probably, but with his uh, independent journalistic uh, investigation, looking in, peeling back the layers, it's opened up opportunities for more deeper investigation, find out what went on. I mean, if he didn't do what he did, laying out this uh, platform, laying out everything that he's done so far, the truth, then Karen Reed would probably be in a way different position right now. It'd be almost frightening because I don't think that people would have looked in this deep, you know, and I have to thank him for the opportunity. Thank you, TB, for allowing us to come into this movement and help you. You know, I never wanted to take away. I always wanted just to add, you know, and he is. He's the he's the 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 person that's on top of the totem that is that knows way more that knows way more and has put in the work and the sacrifice and uh, I admire that so thank you TV because Karen Reed would be in a different spot right now prosecutor but funny. also a criminal defense attorney he also practices entertainment law he wears a lot of hats thanks to both of you for coming on uh, Aiden I'll start with you I actually want to just call you Turtle or turtle boy, um, why do you support Karen Reed? You know, the Commonwealth says, we've got all this evidence against her. John O'Keefe's DNA is on her crack tail light pieces. She was drunk. She backed into him and hit him. Uh, the evidence is there. They were saying this in court this week. So well, why do you think that there's a conspiracy? I support Karen Reed because she's 100% factually innocent. And all of the evidence belies that a child who spends 10 minutes looking at this case can clearly see that there is no possible way that Karen Reed killed John O'Keefe. This was confirmed yesterday by in court when it was announced that the FBI hired a specialist who determined that it was uh, impossible for John O'Keefe's injuries to be caused by a car and it is impossible 
for the car to have the damage it had after hitting his six foot two, 217 pound body. I also support Karen Reed because I, uh, although I didn't know her prior to this, uh, I, I generally believe that uh, corruption uh, needs to be exposed and that an injustice to someone like Karen Reed could be an injustice to any of us if we don't stand up mm -hmm. and do something about it. Now, Aiden, you are facing criminal charges. We need to be clear about that related to this case. You're accused yes, of intimidating same. witnesses. The um, the prosecution in this case says that you and Karen Reed, you know, have a friendship, I guess, or you know each other. You've gotten. I always love how uh, these programs try to throw him curveballs like it's going to rattle him, you know, like it's going to rattle him. He's going to give it right back. He's going to give it right back. And he's going to say, yeah, the same thing. And you're going to hear this here. Uh, but I always love this. They try to get get to rattle uh, TV, and uh, you know, <laughs> don't. Very, he's always going to be focused. Always going to be on it. Let's play. To this. know her, signal messages going back and forth. Um, is she kind of using you, or to kind of get her message out there and and do her PR? Is that true? As the absolutely uh, Commonwealth would contend. I I never knew Karen Reed prior to this. I'm a journalist covering a story. If I want to speak to a source on or off the record, I can. That's what Karen Reed is. She's Absolutely. a source for stories that I write. She does not direct what I do at all. She knows that. Some of the other court documents actually belie that, she, in which she said that she wished I talked about other things more, but I don't. I've been doing this for 10 years, investigative journalism. This is one of thousands of stories that I've published, and nobody controls the content on my website. I've certainly never intimidated any witnesses. The same corrupt cops who are framing Karen Reed for murder, and who I've been writing about, are coincidentally the same police that determined that I'm intimidating witnesses. It now appears, now that we know as a fact, that John O'Keefe was not hit by a car, thanks to the yeah. FBI's independent Thank investigation, you. that the people, that the so-called witnesses are actually soon to be criminal defendants. And it appears as if they are the ones- Odd that uh, Jen McCabe wasn't in court that day of that uh, of Karen's last hearing. Odd that uh, a lot of them weren't there. It's interesting. Very, very interesting. Who killed John O'Keefe. And they are simply attempting to prevent me from asking these people legitimate questions. All of my protesting and activism yesterday uh, was justified in court. Everything I did was vindicated. And at the end of this, uh, you're, the charges are going to be dropped and the people charging me are going to be the ones facing criminal charges themselves. Daryl, I want to bring you into this. Um, it was revealed in court by Karen Reed's defense attorneys that there was some type of federal, uh, an expert hired by the feds who said he concluded, and this is what the defense is saying about this expert, the state did not respond to this when it was brought up in court, that there was an expert who said, oh, I, I don't think he was hit by her vehicle or something to that effect. The Commonwealth did say in court, though, we presented all of this evidence to the grand jury. This indictment should stand. This case should go to the tr go to trial. There is all of this evidence showing that Karen Reed committed this crime. I, 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 uh, I think I'm going to go back to what something Lally said about the defense playing three card Monty. I think the Commonwealth has been playing three card Monty all along. I mean, we just found out in Karen's last hearing that, no, this is not true. Uh, the Commonwealth has not been foregoing with all of the evidence in this case. Just like Jackson said, the Commonwealth had a lot of this information and they just had it turned over to them uh, just before Karen's last hearing. So what are they hiding? What are they hiding? Very interesting. One, because it's an expert hired by the FBI doesn't make him or her better or worse. It makes them different. There is a perception that if you're hired by the feds, that you're better. That's not necessarily the case. As we see from the FBI's little problem with Hunter Biden and a certain informant that's no longer there. So that bothers me. But the question is, why would the prosecution go after Karen Reed? What possible explanation do we have for why they would go after her if they didn't believe that she was guilty? Having said that, an indictment by the grand jury is not a big deal. When I was a prosecutor in Miami, a prosecutor in Atlanta, we used to say 
a grand jury would indict a ham sandwich, or depending where you are, it might be a corned beef sandwich. So the grand jury is spoon fed all of the evidence and it's very unusual and unlikely that the grand jury would say no bill, which is we're not going to bring the charges. That doesn't concern me. If a prosecutor wants charges brought, he or she is going to have them brought. Simply simple. What does concern me is the evidence or lack of evidence. And the state says they have DNA. Well, DNA does not stand for does not apply. And so that's a big concern. And I don't understand why they would go after Karen Reed unless they actually believe based upon the evidence that they have that she's guilty. They said that they have this, you know, they have her saying at the scene, I hit him, I hit him, things of that nature uh, to paramedics. You know, it sounds like they think they have all of these things that they pull together to show, or at least the state thinks that they do, that Karen Reed hit him, that they'd been out drinking, the relationship wasn't going as well as maybe some people would think that it was. It was rather toxic, according to uh, what they would contend in some court documents, at least the prosecutors, and, and that they were out drinking that night. She drops him off at this house or whatever, and she backs into him and then and yeah. takes off. It was basically like a drunk driving hit and run. I mean, do you think that the what from what you know of the case, Daryl, that the evidence is there for that? I think the evidence is there and the evidence is not there. The fact that she says, I hit him, according to the paramedics, doesn't mean a lot to me. It might mean she thought she hit him. It might mean she thought that's what she said, should have said. Funny that, uh, what was it? Um, Lally said that, phones don't lie. But then we find out about destroyings of the uh, destroying of two phones and the DA's office instructing to destroy those two phones. Or it might be she really did hit him that she didn't say that she did it intentionally. If it was a DUI and she hit him and she left, not good for her. If on the other hand, she didn't hit him and the evidence shows enough, and remember this is a criminal case, so it has to be beyond and to the exclusion of every reasonable doubt, not every doubt, but every reasonable doubt to convict her. So there's a lot to be played with. And in my view, depending how she looks in court, depending on her body language, depending on her facial expressions, her hairstyle, that's what a jury looks at. They don't listen to the evidence as much as people think they do. They look at the defendant and they analyze the defendant and then they mm -hmm. sort of go from there. Have, I don't care if you're disagreeing with me, but have that's either, the way it is, in my view. Have either, have either of you seen the autopsy photos? <laughs> I have. I have not. Yes, so the autopsy I've photos. Seen the autopsy photos. Oh. I have them on my phone. So they have he has what appear to be dog bites. See the uh look at Angela Levy now. She's like, oh fuck. Oh fuck. <laughs> That's why I love TV. So observant. Just sits back and waits, lets people talk, and then just bagoom, boom all over his arm inside the house lived a, a german shepherd who according to canton animal control records sent two people to Oof. the er for biting them Just. he also had black eyes and a three inch laceration in the back of his head he had no broken bones or bruises below his nose and they want us to believe and he was found on the grass he landed on grass and they want us to believe that those injuries somehow came from a three-ton lexus backing into him at a a rate of speed that they have not determined yet. They initially said 24 miles an hour. They've taken that back because it's yep. impossible to have accelerated to 24 miles an hour in just 62 feet. Uh, they do not, when you look at him, it looks like a man who got the crap kicked out of him yep. and was chewed up by a dog. It does not look like a man because Lexuses do not have teeth. Lexuses weigh, like the, the Lexus Alex weighs three tons. He would have shat, a shattered pelvis. He would have bruises on his body. It doesn't make sense at all. And to answer your question before, you asked, why would they do this? Why would they go after her? And the answer to that is simple. The lead detective in this is state police detective, Michael Proctor. Michael Proctor hid from the grand jury, as we found out yesterday, that he has been close family friends with the homeowners, the Alberts, for over two decades. At his sister's wedding, eight-year-old Colin Albert was the ring bearer. 
And as it so happens, Colin Albert was inside 34 Fairview Road that night, and he was never questioned, never questioned by Trooper Proctor. Trooper Proctor never mentioned that, he is, that this family, that they called Alberts a second family, that he had Julie Albert, Colin Albert's mother, try to babysit for him just 10 days before John O'Keefe was killed. That is how close these people are. So to answer your question about why would they frame her, so that Colin Albert and the people inside that house aren't questioned, aren't treated as suspects, and don't go to jail because somebody has to be responsible for John O'Keefe's death. Makes no sense, Turtle Boy. Makes no sense to me at all. You can be friends. I've had friends for 50 years or more. That doesn't mean I would lie for them. It doesn't mean they would lie for me. It might mean I would go more lightly on them than otherwise, but that doesn't make sense to me. And I'm sorry, as a former prosecutor, maybe I don't see it the way defense lawyers do. Most of the time I try to. It I just think makes it's no important sense. we point out too, um, as far as the dog bites go, they they say that this, they say, and obviously none of us are in the autopsy room, uh, but the dog bite theory you know, the prosecution is saying Here comes the producer in her ear. The producer in her ear is talking right now. And there was no dog DNA uh, on John O'Keefe uh, during well, that's the not autopsy. True. That's not that's not true because the arm tissues, uh, DNA, the arm tissue samples have disappeared. Yeah, they've just disappeared. Boom. A lot of things have disappeared in this case, like the Canton Library video from 1237 to 1239, which would have shown Karen Reed driving through the center of town and would have given a perfect image of whether or not her taillight was in fact broken. That uh, footage was handed over to Trooper Michael Proctor, the same detective who is good friends with the homeowners. And then two minutes, the exact two minutes when Karen Reed drove by has just disappeared. They have the rest of it, but they don't have those two minutes. If Karen Reed actually did it, and her taillight was actually shattered, they would have her dead to rights right there. But they didn't. It just mattered. Yeah, I mean, and let's talk about all the, the footage that could have been taken in that neighborhood that night. Ironically, everybody's camera didn't record one thing. You know, you go back to what Nick Rocco said. He said, please, just show me the video. Show me the video from that night on any of the ring cams or, or uh, any security footage that was around in that neighborhood at the time, just around 1230 a.m. that night. Show me the video. And that will either sway me left or right if this happened. And no one's, none of the video, there's no recorded video, apparently. There's no video. Everybody's video didn't work that night. Works fucking every 364 nights uh, of the year. But on that specific night, just didn't work. Nothing, no cameras around there worked. I find that just amazing. Patrick, a lot of things have disappeared in this case. Turtle Boy, Karen Reed is asking the court to dismiss the indictment against her. And that never, in my experience, never happens. I mean, I've never seen a judge just toss out an indictment. So do you really think realistically that she thinks she has any shot of this happening? Uh, yeah, I mean, you've probably never seen uh, a murder case where the police themselves and the district attorneys office themselves are under investigation by the United States Attorney's Office in which the they, they, they commence a grand jury that lasts for several months in which every single one of the so-called witnesses are, are treated as essentially suspects by the federal government. We've never seen anything like this before. So I understand that it's probably not common, but uh, it, if the judge has any decency or common sense to her, she will absolutely dismiss this. I mean, it's, it's right in the, fe the, the FBI's investigation. John O'Keefe was not hit by a car. His, in, his, his injuries are inconsistent with that. How can you move forward with a murder case in which the woman is accused of driving a car into John O'Keefe if the FBI is saying that didn't in fact happen? Well, we, I think we need more information about that. Both sides are going to have their experts. You know, the prosecution is also saying, Turtle Boy, that the defense basically wrote to them I wrote to the U.S. Attorney's Office and was like, we think you need to look into this. There's some stuff going on. There's yeah. some malfeasance, and did, some police cover-up yeah. and things like that. And so the prosecution is basically accusing the defense of making this up and, and instigating this federal investigation. That sounds like they're saying that the FBI is easily fooled. <laughs> if the FBI didn't think that any of this was credible, they would have told Karen Reed's defense team to pound sand. Yeah, I mean, people have to understand the FBI is not going to get involved in a case if they know that they don't have the goods on it. Um, you know, I just, I, there's a case that I cover about uh, this 
watch YouTuber, the scammer, this fraud, uh, Anthony Farah, that is now uh, arrested in, in jail, uh, waiting trial under a federal investigation of money laundering and mail fraud. And they tracked this guy for quite a long time, almost up to two years. And he, you know, listen, what is the federal investigator? I think Fed Fed rate bringing someone to uh, court and getting conviction is like 98 uh, percent. So they're not going to get involved in a case if uh, they know they don't have the goods. Uh, that's the way that I look at it. And, and, it, and it goes by their uh, their, you know, their success succession rate in cases as well, too. Um, you know, but TB's right here. You know, he would. They they would essentially tell uh, the defense and the Commonwealth to go pound sand. Instead, they launched time. a probe that has lasted now in excess of about 15 or 16 months investigating this. Clearly, they know something is going on here. Something is wrong here, or they wouldn't be wasting all this time and resources on it. Yep. Carol, you're a former <laughs> prosecutor. The prosecution in this case, we, I mean, we don't have access to these federal investigative materials, the grand jury materials from the federal grand jury. I mean, the prosecution in this case is saying, well, what the feds have released backs up what we've been saying, that she did this. And the defense is saying, oh, they're saying Karen Reed couldn't have done this, couldn't have hit her with this, with her, her car. And uh, they're claiming this is exculpatory. I mean, Obviously, we've got two sides who want two different outcomes here. How how do we get a federal investigation into this case? Is it because John O'Keefe was a Boston police officer? I mean, I, I just don't get where this is coming from. It's coming from Hollywood soap opera writers, if they still existed, couldn't write this any better. All of this is much ado about nothing and much ado about a lot. Did she back up? and hit him, and did he die as a result of it? I don't know that that makes any difference in terms of whether or not the FBI or the U.S. Attorney's Office is investigating. If it's taken, as Turtle Boy says, this long, it tells me there's not a lot of fire where there may be smoke. They have to be a lot more concise, much more quick on the draw than this, in my view. If there was a lot, I think we would have heard about it beforehand. I don't know, but that's one of the best... That's one of the best screen names I've seen in a long time. Rich, the Intel, the Italian plumber. I love it. That's so good. On the other hand, who knows? Daryl, I'm assuming you agree with Look me that TV. there's no chance the judge is, is going to dismiss this indictment. I think there's less than no chance that the judge will <laughs> get rid of the indictment, will dismiss the indictment. And as far as never being convicted, when I negotiate, someone says we never do this, I stick out my right hand and I shake their hand and I say, welcome to never. You can never say never, according to James Bond. Well, Daryl Cohen, uh, thank you for the James Bond reference. And uh, Aiden Kearney, Turtle Boy, I should call you. Thanks for coming on. We appreciate it. All right. So, you know, just a couple of key takeaways. And this is something that, you know, I was watching the hearing the other day. It filled in another gap. So let's look at the timeline really quick. About 1230 a.m. ish. Uh, Karen Reed drops off John O'Keefe. John O'Keefe makes his side, makes his way inside 34 Fairview. At 1.30 p.m., it has been reported that Higgins clocks in at Canton PD. Uh, at, I'm sorry, 1.30 a.m., 1.30 a.m. Then now we find out during the hearing, uh, Karen Reed's last hearing, at 2.22, Higgins and Albert communicate. They have a communication. So Higgins is supposed to be at Canton PD at 1.30 a.m. Higgins and Albert have a communication at 2.22 a.m. And then ironically enough, right after, five minutes later, you have Jen McCabe Googling how long, how long to die in cold. I don't know what else to tell everybody here. I mean, the writing is on the wall. It's now becoming a lot clearer what went on inside 34 fear view. Will we ever truly know what happened? Probably not. But the people inside that house know what happened. I think now coming out and knowing that a federal investigation, because we only heard rumors about it, but knowing now in open court that it's on the record that the feds are involved in this case, you may start seeing some people crack here pretty soon and start telling the truth. We might not get the complete 100% 
uh, truth, but we will know eventually what happened inside 34 Fairview. So let's pull up Coffin Daffer's response. This was about 24 hours ago. Uh, this is going to be really, really interesting. And I also want to just put on the record, this is uh, myself just reacting to this stream. Uh, you all can react along here in the chat. We can play along here. But this is just a reaction video uh, to Jennifer Coffin Daffer talking about the confounding case of John O'Keefe. All right, here we go. The wild tale has been spun. This case I, I still, is so interesting. Here's the thing. I still don't understand, and I want to. I'm going to uh, talk a little bit about this before we go into the video. You know, I look at Coffin Daffer as someone, um, you know, that goes out there. She puts out a lot of, a lot of information, a lot of opinions, a, a lot of opinions. We'll just say opinions about cases out there. She puts a lot of opinions on Twitter a lot. Puts her opinion out there, and I kind of look at her now as someone that. You know, when someone goes into something, you know, really hard into something. So let's just say you have two people that are outside and someone looks up and they go, the sky is blue. Uh, I'm sorry. The sky is uh, is red. No, the sky is blue. Uh, that's a fact. The sky is blue. And they say, oh, no, 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 no. The sky is red. And I'm going to tell you why the sky is red. And this is the reasons why the sky is red. And they're just going hard and hard and sticking with their conviction I look at it this sense now. Now what we heard just the other day in open court during uh, Karen Reed's hearing, Jackson getting up there, spilling more uh, factual evidence that is going on in this case, putting more facts pen to paper down there uh, on the record. You know, it's it's kind of painting Coffin Daffer in this, this corner. But now she has to overly push out, overly push, no, 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 I'm right, and this is why. And, uh, you know, I look at certain situations, let's say like uh, Bill Clinton. OK, I did not have sexual relations with that woman, Miss Lewinsky, just fully convicted, pushing forward, didn't do it. But what ultimately ended up coming out? He did. He did have sex with her. Uh, Fannie Willis, uh, with all the things that are going on in, in the Trump case, that D.A. down there. Oh, I didn't I didn't have relations with this uh, this this gentleman. There was no money passed back and forth. And you saw all the over animation in court because they're so convinced by their convictions that now when the truth starts spilling out, they have to push back harder because they don't want to look like an idiot. And I think in the end uh, of all of this, the biggest person with egg on their face is going to be uh, Jennifer Coffin Daffer. All right, let's play through here. Interesting. She drove him there. A little bit of this here. I'm going to go back. Let's see. We'll start here. True crime enthusiasts, welcome to Break the Case with Jen Coffendaffer. I'm your host. I'm Jen Coffendaffer, and I'm here to bring you oh, such a concerning story. Uh, I remember that background. I actually did an interview with Coffendaffer, ooh, what, six, seven months ago? I remember this background. I think. I think she was using this background in the video that I did with her. Uh, but I had her come on and talk about the Idaho 4 case. And the funny thing is, I actually respected her views on that case. And, uh, you know, when she went full on, Karen Reed is completely 1,000% guilty. Uh, I just couldn't align myself uh, anymore. <laughs> so we'll keep uh, going. Normally, I interview guests and bring those interviews on Friday. But I'm going with something a little bit different. And specifically... I want to step into the trenches, and it's truly the trenches, and talk about the case of John O'Keefe. Originally, I got involved in this case because two people on Twitter, X, contacted me in my DMs, which I try to take a look at as much as I can, and asked me if I would take a look at John O'Keefe's case. Now, this was months ago, months and months ago. So what do I do when somebody asks that and I can find the time? I always go to the court documents. That's the first place Those I look. Documents. I hope it's the first place most people look. You have to look at both sides. I went in very cold because- uh, She's chastising you. She's chastising you. So she, you, you gotta, I hope, I just hope 
that everybody will. Yeah. And then when we did and we looked at them and we started adding, uh, adding everything up, I mean, to me, the first stream that I ever did on this, I looked into it. We read through the documents and I went, something doesn't seem right here. Something, something doesn't seem right. Something doesn't add up. And I think a lot for it was the way that the Commonwealth said that John O'Keefe uh, got his injuries uh, on, on his body and that ultimately what ended up killing him. I said, it doesn't make sense. And then, you know, discovering kind of going down that wormhole, uh, finding a lot of the information about what Turtle Boy was reporting on this and then seeing his uh, his reenactment of the bat, you know, backing up. And it just it didn't make sense. I'm like, how is this even possible? Uh, when I was contacted, I've gotten contacted about a lot of different cases. And sometimes uh, I see clear issues. Like with the Delphi the music, case, so I see issues. The music. Uh, does that mean I think Richard Allen is not guilty? Uh, well, right now, nobody, of course, that we're discussing is guilty in the court of law. So let's just distinguish that. Two very oh, different things. But that doesn't mean somebody didn't commit a crime. So in the case of Richard Allen, do I think he committed the crime, killing Abby and Libby? I don't know. Uh they, I have so many concerns with that case, uh, but uh, there are five confessions we haven't heard yet. And I think for me anyway, that's going to be uh, the decision maker. But not to digress, I'm going back to John O'Keefe. So the John O'Keefe case, let me just set this up for those who aren't following it, because I do realize that a lot of people follow very specific cases, but this case is- I think she took some shots at Melanie Little in this too. I don't know what the hell's going on with the music. That's fucking super distracting. So uh, drop the music, it's dumb. Just talk. You, we don't need the dramatic music. It's very, very distracting is uh, a very volatile case. A officer named John O'Keefe was out with his then girlfriend, a woman named Karen Reed, and they were going out and just- Get to the super chat really quick. Super doob 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 Sunday super chat. Birthday super chat. We got one of the OGs in the house, Motion VIP with the five. He said, we are happy for you and your success, brother. Congrats with your new- podcast studio yes i cannot wait i'm stressing over this um to have no idea how we're going to lay it out i've had some uh ideas and i want it to look pro we're going to make that happen uh it's going to take a little while but we're going to get there and i already said i will not turn on the camera and go live until i feel that it's in the uh right space the right space of how i want it to look because i don't want to be doing things over and over Five, you know, five times over motion. Thanks for the five, but the, the sticker as well, the super sticker. If anybody wants to donate to the uh, stream today, you can. My uh, link is up there at the top. I said uh, for my birthday, over the hill donations, uh, my cash apps up there and my buy me a coffee and then uh, Nightbot drops demo and all that stuff too. So I appreciate it. All right, let's get through coffin that. Having a night out on the town with friends and they went to bars Music in Canton, Massachusetts, a very wonderful and quite expensive community. Uh, all of the individuals lived in and around that community that were involved in this case. And they ended up uh, going out and drinking quite heavily. Now, according to documents, and this is based on film footage, there's also going to be uh, credit card receipts, uh, there's also going to be witness testimony. There's going to be a lot of information that comes forward specifically regarding how much they drank. Mm -hmm. But when it comes to Karen Reed, the numbers are between seven and nine drinks and in a very small period of time. Now, Karen Reed is not a large woman. She apparently has a decent drink tolerance because after she drank all of that, she was the one that actually drove in her Lexus SUV with her boyfriend at that time, John O'Keefe, uh, to a residence. Just because someone goes out, you know, and I like this point by uh, KC, she says, oh, the credit card receipt is supposed to make me believe that John hit, uh, uh, Karen hit John. Uh, you know, the, the, just because someone had a good time and some drinks 
And, you know, I'm listen, I'm sure all of you go out, you'll probably go out today and have a few drinks. Uh, but doesn't necessarily mean that you went out and you're going to kill someone or you've killed somebody. I mean, what the fuck does that have to do with anything? And she's very uh, locked into this. Well, she had a lot of drinks and this. That. Who cares? Who cares? Uh, people don't have drinks when they go out. But it doesn't necessarily mean that uh, I'm just going to I'm going to kill you all of a sudden. I'm going to run you over with my SUV <laughs> in Canton. Now, this residence was owned by an individual named Brian Albert. And keep in mind, her own people, her own people, the FBI, the organization that she's worked for, for what, 20 plus years, probably longer. I'm sorry, I don't know her full credentials. Uh, it's not in d disrespect, I guess, to that. Um, but her own people <laughs> did their own in independent investigation and had an expert come in and do crime scene uh, reconstruction. And it was confirmed through that expert from her own people, the FBI, that the injuries were not consistent with an SUV hitting an individual, especially, uh, specifically, John O'Keefe. Karen Reed's SUV did not hit John O'Keefe. That's her people giving that report. And that's why I say, I think that's why she's doing this now. She's putting these episodes out. She's pushing back harder because at the end of the day, when this all goes out and you know, what's going to happen when, when this is dismissed, or if this goes to trial and a jury finds uh, Karen Reed, not guilty of all charges, she's going to look silly in the end. She's going to look like an ass in the end. And that's why I think she's out here putting all this propaganda out now to try to save her. And I should say, John O'Keefe was a Boston police officer and a very well-respected guy. Somehow, John O'Keefe, which <clears throat> seems to always happens with these victims, has really been forgotten in all of this. He adopted both his niece and nephew. He came in, a single dad, a police officer, and assumed responsibility for them. Obviously a very unselfish person. But beyond that, he was just so well liked. I really hope you all do some research on him because you will see posting after posting of just how well regarded John O'Keefe was. I believe that. Moving from John O'Keefe now back to the facts of this particular evening. This particular night, ended up being one of the worst blizzards ever to hit Canton. They had over 20 inches of snow, over 20 inches of snow. It was freezing cold. And the house they went to was actually a really, like really nice house in Canton owned by Brian Albert. Now, 20 inches in a Massachusetts snowstorm is like, it's like fairy dust. Well, it's like, the dust that they sprinkled around, uh, the taillight dust, you know, they, they sprinkled it around. That's, it's not much. It's not a blizzard. That's not, that's not much here in New England. So I don't know where she lives or if she's ever been in, into a Massachusetts real blizzard. Uh, definitely not. <laughs> What's not a blizzard? Brian one Albert. Worst, this is one of the worst blizzards, one of the worst winters. That's so factually untrue. I mean, that, that snow probably melted two or three days after it hit. And his buddy, Every New an born. ATF agent, also named Brian, Brian Higgins, they had gone to New York City for area for a funeral. And they were at home because Brian Albert's son was actually uh, celebrating a birthday. And this was a small gathering you know, about a dozen people, uh, family and friends. Oh, and they were there really just... I say a small gathering's like three people. 12 is a lot. That's a lot of people in that house. Celebrating at his home. And they had invited John O'Keefe and Karen Reed when they were out uh, to join them. In other words, some of the people that, the, that John O'Keefe was with and Karen Reed was with were invited, uh, specifically a lady named Jen McCabe. And so Jen McCabe said, come on, join us. We're just having a little get together over at Brian Albert. So 
everybody went over there. Uh, the McCabe's and others arrived earlier. Um, and John O'Keefe and Karen Reed came after the others had arrived. It's snowing. It's very cold out. And Karen Reed does not pull in the driveway. There's a series of text messages where Jim McCabe is reaching out to She's the hero. Uh, John O'Keefe, you know, kind of telling him where to park. Oh, park here, you know. But what happens that is completely unsuspected is that Karen Reed and John O'Keefe get into an argument on the way to the Alberts. Mm -hmm. And there's going to be recordings. There are recordings of her anger and hate toward John. Her anger and hate. Her anger and hate. Just like every couple has an argument. You've never had an argument with your partner before, Jennifer Coffin-Daffer. I'm sure all of you in here have had arguments with your partner. Right? I'm sure you have. Let me know. Have you had an have you had an argument with your partner ever in your entire relationship? Drop a one in the chat. If you haven't, drop a two, drop a two. But you haven't had an argument. You haven't said things like, oh my God, I hate you. You're ridiculous. I hate you. You haven't said that before. You say that as a reactionary thing in a fight, in a relationship. It's supposed to. Uh, it's supposed to get a reaction from your partner. I hate you. That's to get them back because you're so angry in that moment. <gasps> oh my God. She said that she hated him. She said that she hated him. I've said that in relationships when I've been in a fight. I hate you. Get away from me. I hate you right now. You haven't said that before. And hate is the word that is used. It's to invoke a response back. It's, it's gaslighting. That's all it is. She's livid. Oh, she's and I know this was likely all exacerbated. No, she was livid. And she was freaking out when she got back to the scene and saw John lying on that lawn, freaking out. Giving him CPR. She was the only one that was trying to help John. She couldn't believe it. Does that sound like a killer? By her alcohol intake. But nevertheless, that was the state of mind she was in when she dropped off John O'Keefe. She drove him there. That seems to be one fact oh, that neither the defense or the prosecutor. Jessica makes a point. She says, my son is currently in a timeout and is screaming, I hate you. Uh, as I type this. <laughs> so we do that. It's a reaction. It's a reaction to get a response to try to hit someone because hate is one of the most nasty things that you could say to someone in a relationship, right? Am I right? What's the biggest way to get a response out of your partner when you're angry at them? I hate you right now because hate is such a strong word. Like I said, it's to invoke a response prosecution uh, that stands in dispute. But what is in dispute is whether John O'Keefe went inside. Now, it's in dispute, but he did not go inside. How do I know that? Oh. Because all the witnesses inside no. the house have said he did not go in the house. So she's ignoring Nagel's testimony in the affidavit. What did he say? 10 and 2, interior light on, drove by, didn't see anybody inside the passenger seat, meaning Karen Reed's SUV. So where's John? Where's John? She's ignoring that. She's ignoring that because Nagel, that's the one the Commonwealth wants them to go away. Because he's the eyewitness that said, I looked over, 10 and 2. Interior light on. Where's John? The only one that was in the SUV was Karen. Karen Reed has said so many different statements. Uh, she has spoken publicly 
on various news programs. Uh, she has spoken to Boston Magazine. She has spoken in public on the courthouse stairs. Said it feels we're the only ones fighting for the truth of what happened to John O'Keefe. And me and my family and my attorneys and my team have marshaled every resource yeah. to get to the truth. Just feels like no one else wants it. You didn't do it. And I can tell you. But she cuts off that part. She cuts off the part where she says, um, where she says, I tried to save his life. I had his blood all over me. I was the only one saving his life. You notice how she cuts that off? From interviewing individuals <clears throat> for decades, thousands of interviews. When you ask that question, it's so telling. Uh, specifically in this case, because she was a little caught off guard. The response for somebody who doesn't do it a hundred percent of the time, I can almost say, okay, I won't say a hundred percent. I will say 99% of the time is no. And usually not only no, but hell no, 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 no. I didn't do it. Watch her response. We know who did it, Steve. We know. And we know who spearheaded this cover up. You all know. Yes, we do. And no, she didn't do it. She's taken aback. She gives kind of an ugly, wrinkly face. By the way, she pauses a, a extended period of time for a question that should have been easily answered, and says something words to the effect of, "You know who did it." Oh, what's up, Ali? Ali Reza, what's up, my my friend, longtime uh, friend here of the channel and friend in life. Thank you so much. Uh, says, don't know if I'm early or missed it. Happy birthday, you filthy animal. Thank you so much for stopping by. It's good to see you here. I pop in on the uh, <laughs> the JJ streams every now and then. It's good to see you. I hope uh, 2024 has been a better year for you. I wish you the, the best of luck and health and everything um, in your life, all the good fortune. And thank you so much for being a friend of the channel. Thank you so, so, so much. Big supporter. Thank you. Ali just dropped 10. Uh, welcome in new members. Thank you, Ali. I appreciate that. And uh, really, man, you're awesome. Awesome person. Very, very awesome person. Thank you. Later on, on those courtroom stairs, you know, within a few seconds, her attorney actually gives the right answer. No, no, she didn't do it. Because he realizes, too, he sees the faux pas there. He sees that she couldn't answer the question. Moving back to the specifics of that night, why is so much in controversy if she supposedly dropped him off? Well, there are several sources, or I should say two particular sources, of information that's digital in nature regarding John O'Keefe's movements. One. And this is the one that matters. Oh. It's a cell phone. Yeah, that's right. It's a cell phone information. Guess what happened? The Apple Health data said that he what ascended three flights of stairs. So how could that happen? Did he magically float in the air? He went. He did a Mario. He went woo when he jumped. Wee! Is that how it happened? Is that how it happened, Jennifer? He did a Mario. We get out and just did a Mario. Wee! <laughs> yeah the cell phone won't lie it showed that he went into the house he took steps and went towards the house and went in the house where did that cell phone me, move? Mario. where did it go <laughs> and for those of you who have watched any of these trials like the alex murdoch trial perfect example the teams. Yeah, you know what? I urge everybody to go back. I did a stream about uh, cell Celebrite information and uh, cast information, and I used the Murdoch testimony from the FBI, the special uh, FBI agent that testified uh, in that. It was about an hour and a half uh, segment, and you go back and watch that on my channel if you're if you're interested. I think it's a, if you haven't seen it, I think it's very good to uh, to watch that because it will give you some insight to how cast and cel celebrate information is used to convict. That or analyze these. To, uh, to not convict. Phones, this is what they do. 
I can tell you in the FBI, a cast team agent, they have literally, for instance, the one that testified in Murdoch, they yep. spend their life doing that. So some of us spend our life working investigations, being case agents. When I say our life, our day in and day out, you know, 16 hour days sometimes, certainly 10 hour, 12 hour days, we're investigating our cases. And these guys are understanding and working with digital forensics information from cell phones. They are the unequivocal experts. They are going to be able to tell you where that phone went. And in fact, they've already said, they said that phone was with John O'Keefe and in fact found along or under actually John O'Keefe's body. So what is the confusion? Well, there's some Apple information Ooh, that showed try. quote unquote He's going to try to debunk it now. I'm going to debunk it. But didn't she just say that cell phones don't lie and facts don't lie? Didn't she just say that? That information doesn't lie? So she's going to try to debunk this, though. But this is a factual thing that was on the phone. I guarantee you she's going to try to debunk it here. Climb three flights of stairs. It's ridiculous. The timestamp on that Apple information was actually when they hadn't even arrived according to the ways information. So you know what fucking wrong ways has been in my life. How many times has ways been wrong for you? How many times has ways been wrong for you? I wouldn't go by ways. I would go by Apple health data. I'm pretty sure that that Apple has it pretty much nailed down because if they didn't, and because I remember there was uh, lawsuits, there were lawsuits about people, um, about blood pressure, pressure readings and pulse readings. I, I think there was some class action lawsuits not too long ago about that. I think reading about that a couple of years ago. So I think they would have to have that uh, nailed down. Nailed down. I think Apple pretty much is pretty good at, at getting that stuff locked in to not get sued. Waze is saying they're still driving. They're still, it's program. They're driving from the bar to Brian Albert's house. And yet this Apple Watch information is saying he climbs stairs. Well, anyone familiar with the Apple Watch, this does not have the scientific certainty, the digital certainty and timestamp of a cellular telephone information. So, and it's contradicted by the cellular telephone telephone information Whoa. and Voice by the crack. ways information and by the fact. So we think he went inside and started running up and down stairs by the way, before he ever arrived at the house. So that information just needs to be disregarded. Oh, <laughs> the other information that he you just said, cell phone information is the most important information. Remember she held her phone up. So she went, she went this right here, this right here. And if you want to hear about that, perfect example is looking at the Murdoff case and it has all the facts in there and the information is there. But then she went, well, there's something kind of about this health data information that, and, and this is where we talked about. I think this is exactly what Lally said. Three card Monty. It's what these uh, opinionated experts like to put on. Uh, out there and put this out in the ether. Well, we want to look at all this information, but we're going to ignore this. And you hear Jackson talk a lot about this uh, during the hearings too. I think he did a lot of that in this last hearing, uh, in Karen Reed's hearing. You know, uh, and this is Coffin for now playing, uh, playing, uh, who the hell is that magician uh, that, um... oh, damn it. What's his name? Uh, you probably all know in the chat who I'm thinking of. I think his last name starts with a C as well. Why can I not get this? I should know this. He was really famous in like the eighties and the nineties. Uh, it'll come to me, but maybe someone has it. They'll, they'll type it up in the chat, but he was the illusionist, the master of illusion, you know, and that's what she, uh, she's doing here. That's what she's doing here. Damn it. I can't. Oh, uh, David Copperfield, David Copperfield, Chris Angel, fuck Chris Angel. Chris Angel sucks. David, Co David, Cop uh, David Copperfield, Remember when he made the uh, Statue of Liberty disappear? 
So he made the Statue of Liberty disappear and coughing that for saying, uh, let's look at all this information over here, but the half of health data is like the uh, Statue of Liberty. We're going to make that disappear. We're going to trick the audience. Don't listen to that. Don't look at the man behind the curtain. It's that Wizard of Oz theory. All right, let's keep playing on. <laughs> he went inside the house. Copperfield does yeah. not exist. Cop Cop it doesn't exist. Now, Karen Reed, as I've said, has said from time to time, depending on what interview you watch, that she went inside the house, that he the went inside the house. Terrible. Self-serving statement. Of course, she's going to want to say he went inside the house, even though all the other individuals inside the house are going to say he did not go inside the house. So what happened? What happened was oh, oh. Karen Reed backed up and hit na, 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 na. John O'Keefe. How do we know that? We know that from what the is evidence it? that never lies. It never lies because it never speaks. And that evidence is the taillight information, her taillight on her Lexus SUV gets broken when she hits him. Further, tiny fragments and particles from that taillight get embedded in his clothing. What the fuck is this music? What is this? Is this, yeah, I just saw a little, uh, little mystery say, uh, I think the music convinces me, that's it. The music, the music convinces me, that's it. What are we watching? I feel like we're watching something from uh, Lord of the Rings or something. They're in some fucking key pivotal moment here in the movie. Uh, what is going on? What's going on with this music? And are discovered through scientific analysis. <clears throat> That's going to be a linchpin in this case. Oh. In addition. You're really standing by that tale, the, the, the information. But I mean, it's. Confirmed. I mean, federal, independent federal investigation from the common, from independent from the Commonwealth and from the defense. And the defense didn't even know about it. It has confirmed. I don't know how many times I have to say this, Jennifer Coppenhaver, has confirmed. Your people have confirmed that the injuries uh, are not consistent with John O'Keefe being struck by Karen Reed. It's not consistent. I don't know why you keep continuing to uh, to spread this misinformation. That's your people that have said that. There is DNA on the back of that vehicle. Now, people can say, well, of course, they're boyfriend and girlfriend. He must have been touching the back of that vehicle. Well, I'm just here to say it shows he did indeed touch the back of the vehicle. And when you keep the totality of the circumstances in mind, it makes sense that his DNA would be on there. There was also a hair found on the back of the vehicle. Why now, is there's that been before? reporting? That's not even like that's not even anything that's in the case. So you're you're misleading by showing a photo like that. You're you're terribly misleading right now by showing that photo. That has nothing to do with the case. We've never seen any photo of a hair fiber uh, or a hair. That's that's really really misleading. Mm -hmm including mine, based on an NBC article that the hair has been scientifically matched to John O'Keefe. However, according to recent court filings, it's still being analyzed. So we don't know. We don't know. So she says it had been debunked, but, but, you know, it's still being analyzed. That doesn't make any sense. <laughs> It doesn't make any sense. If that's John O'Keefe's hair yet. In addition, there is going to be information from the vehicle itself. Finally, there's the information that is gleaned from John O'Keefe's body. Now, according to two medical examiners, who actually looked at John O'Keefe's body, 
he has yeah. injuries consistent with being hit by a vehicle. <laughs> Furthermore, he doesn't have. Uh, Herbie chimes in. Herbie Duggan, 199. Thank you so much. Says uh, this chick related to Ben Stein. I don't know if you all remember Ben Stein, uh, 80s and 90s. Uh, he would come on and do commercials for Clear Eye and would talk like this. My eyes are very dry. <laughs> All right, let's keep playing through. Have any injuries that are indicated from a fight? Clear. There's no DNA from anyone else. There are no punch marks. There's no defensive wounds. There's no fighting. No defensive wounds. John had defensive wounds on his hands, like boxer's injuries. Uh, defensive wounds on his arm when the dog bit him. He probably put his arm up to, uh, to save himself from being bit. That went on at all. People want to look at the fact <clears throat> that John O'Keefe has what they call raccoon eyes, which yeah. are the dark circles around the orbit of the eyes. But guess what? That's what happens when you have your skull cracked. And his skull was cracked due to the impact of that vehicle and likely with the impact of that frozen solid ground that he hit. What? In addition, the defense has made a lot about some scratches. That's like exorcist music. By the way, I want to let everybody know uh, what we're doing here is we're reacting, uh, giving my opinion on Jennifer, Jennifer Coffendapper's uh, most recent video here. Uh, you know, we just analyzing, giving our opinion of, of her video. And, uh, you know, we have the right to disagree and, uh, and have this discourse here that we're having here in the chat. So uh, let's keep playing through here. We're going to get some creepy exorcist music now. Uh, I don't know. This is pretty terrible. That are on John O'Keefe's arm. Now, <laughs> these scratches, if you look at the original photo that, by the way, was Wait, leaked Casey. by the defense, this should be pointed out because when you have a leaked photo, it's not even the actual photo that would ever be put into evidence. They can be uh, tainted. They can be um, messed with. Uh, they can be changed and altered so that what you see isn't really the original markings that were on that arm. But nevertheless, the arm was examined by medical examiners who said, yeah, this music. these are scrapes and scratches. They're not even deep, superficial, and they were made by a blunt object. Blunt object meaning you know, steel, something solid, not by a dog. It's, it's actually so interesting. One of the most interesting phenomena I've seen in this case is that people with no medical licenses, a lot of people with law degrees, people who never- That's the shot at Melanie. That's the shot. Here it is. This is the shot that she's taking at Melanie Little right now. That's it right there. Let's back up a little bit here. This is the shot at Melanie. God, we got to get them on a panel together. I'll host it. I'll let you know right now. Jennifer Coffinaffer, if you want to come back to LTL True Crime and you want to go head to head with Melanie Little, I will host it. I will host the show. I will put it out there right now on the record. All you need to do is is contact me. It'll all in be, I don't want to say good fun, but all in good nature. We'll have a, a debate here. And I'd love to see you have a back and forth about the Karen Reed, John O'Keefe case. I will host it. I'll put on the record right now. Melanie, if you're watching this and you want to do it, let me know. Let's get Coffin Daffer on here. And I will host the both of you talking about this because she's taking a swipe at you now, Melanie. She's taking a swipe at you. All right. Let's um, and as I've seen in this case is that people with no medical licenses, a lot of people with law degrees, people who never examined John O'Keefe's body want to take a picture that was leaked 
that could have been altered and whether it was or not altered and what I mean by altered, you know, made more red or made to be brighter marks. The scratches that I saw in the original are very slight. We'll show them here. Oh, okay. And so. they've become experts, experts, pathologists, and have put forth, I'm going to say it, a ludicrous notion that these scratches are somehow dog bites. Now, mind you, the dog only had apparently the top chompers because you don't see the underside, you don't see puncture wounds. And I so, urged Jennifer Coffinaffa to go and watch the stream on Melanie Little's channel. She had a canine expert come in that had over 20 plus years of experience training canine police do dogs. Uh, I would urge her to watch that stream. Anyway, this is just a very interesting piece of information that has spiraled from ridiculous into believed. <laughs> One of the other reasons that people don't believe John O'Keefe was hit by a car is they have put forth a conspiracy. So Herbie chiming in again says she could have at least used a Unsolved Mysteries intro music. Happy birthday, B. Thank you so much. Thank you for the $4.99. I appreciate it. Thanks for the support. Uh, on the channel. I just want to shout out to everybody on X. We have over a thousand people watching on X. Thanks for tuning in this morning on LTL True Crime. If you're not subscribed to my YouTube channel, that is home base. Come over and hang out with us. We have a huge chat here, over uh, 650 people in the chat right now. If you want to come over and join the conversation, we would love you to do that. So just trans, just come over from X right onto YouTube. You can find me at uh, LTL True Crime. Come hang in and in the live chat if you'd like to do that and make sure to come over and subscribe to the channel all right we'll keep playing on we got about another 20 minutes or so and then we're going to wrap this one up thank you all for being here this morning on this sunday morning wake up show here on saint patrick's day a conspiracy hypothesis not based on any facts but a hypothesis that all the individuals in the house that were friends, acquaintances, <clears throat> fellow law enforcement officers, an ATF agent, a Boston cop, wives, children, that they all conspired. All the people in that house, about a dozen people to kill John O'Keefe. Now, why on this particular night, for no particular reason, would these people do this? Well, that's been the trouble of the conspiracy theorists in this case, because they've had to sort of try to concoct something. So they say that they're all in on it. They all committed this murder and or covered it up, even the ATF agent even the Boston police officer, even their wives, even a 17 year old kid and their dog, Chloe. That's why there's bites just by the way, out of all the places, just on one arm and just there. Oh, and this is really important. The fabric was on the sleeve that would have been bitten into by the dog. Guess what? Oh. No dog DNA. Why did the video have that weird cut right there? I've been bitten into by the dog. Guess what? No dog DNA. None. A lot of people say, well, they should have taken tissues from those scratches. Why in the world with all the information they had at the time, which was this was a hit and run, the scratches were linear. The scratches weren't deep. The scratches were from a blunt fork. Why would anybody pay thousands of dollars to submit to a lab to see if they were caused by a dog? There was no evidence that a dog was anywhere involved in this. this I like how she just, there's no evidence. There's a fucking dog in the house. 
there's a dog in the house. How are you saying that there's no evidence that supports that this was ever done by dog? There's a dog in the house. There's a dog in the house. And I'm going to go back and refer to Melanie Little Stream uh, with the the gentleman that she had on there. And I'm sorry, I forgot his name. But uh, a canine expert with over, I think, 20 years experience training canine police dogs that is certified in training canine police dogs. And in his expert opinion, he said that the injuries caused to John O'Keefe's arm were from a dog bite. They were dog bites. The serrations. Remember, he showed that that dummy arm and showed how uh, police dogs attack and when they pull away and they scrape the serrations. <laughs> I don't know, man. I'm a little lost here. This <laughs> originally came in as a domestic violence complaint mm -hmm. because you had two people, girlfriend and boyfriend, and the result was a death. So... In any event, the dog information proved to be absolutely false. And there's a wonderful, interesting moment in court where the defense counsel is asked about that canine DNA. Okay. And his response is priceless. We need to be concerned about canine DNA. Where do we stand with that? Uh, no, I think this is the only outstanding DNA issue. Okay, so... All right, so we're not dealing with canine DNA. DNA. One of the biggest fallacies that has been part of promoting the conspiracy theory was that a text message sent from Jen McCabe, who remember was in the house, who in fact had been. I'm going to let her talk, and then I'm going to. I'm going to. Just friends for about a decade with John O'Keefe. They were close friends who had invited John and Karen to the Alberts that evening that she had texted words to the effect of how long to die in snow. She writes HOS. How, how long to die in snow. And the fallacy, and this was one of the biggest reasons why people latched on, the fallacy from the whole thing was it was based on he has been hit. He is now lying in the snow. As he is lying in the snow, Karen Reed leaves and departs. Where does Karen Reed go? Karen Reed goes to John O'Keefe's house. Okay, so let's just chime in here really quick. You have, um, let's see, you have John O'Keefe being dropped off at approximately 12.30 a.m., you have Higgins uh, uh, at approximately 1.30 a.m. Uh, clocking in at Canton PD. You have Higgins and Albert, now that we just found out in the recent hearing, uh, having a, uh, some communication at 2.22 a.m., okay? And then at 2.27 a.m., Jennifer Coffin-Dapper, Jen McCabe Googles Hoss Long to die in cold. How do we know that? And we go back to the recent hearing. Well, it was confirmed. It was confirmed by the FBI that that search did happen. Those are your people. Those are your people that have confirmed that it did happen. So I don't know why you continue to ignore. I, I, I just don't understand that. Those are your peeps. Your peeps that confirmed it. And part of this is caught on film, but only part Guess why? There is so much film missing from yeah. John O'Keefe's house. Now, we know from text messages that she had with Brian, the ATF agent, that he and her were involved in some sort of romantic situation. At least the nature of these text messages are romantic. So and Karen again, Reed, she puts out, well, they were they were involved in a romantic relationship. Oh, wait, no, actually, it is it appears that it was. So what is it? It either they are or they aren't. Even if they were, who fucking cares? And how about this, Jennifer Coffinapper? How do we know that Brian Higgins 
didn't come on to Karen Reed. Not that it really matters, but let's just think this. Maybe he's bullshitting and saying she came on to me, but in reality, he came on to her and she rejected him. In fact, tells Brian Higgins, the ATF agent, hey, I know where all his surveillance cameras are. I know everything. Don't worry. Don't worry about that. We're not going to get caught because she actually kisses Brian Higgins and is trying to start up a relationship or at least a romantic tryst with Brian Higgins behind John O'Keefe's back. And so that is how we know she has familiarity with John O'Keefe's video system. So after she returns to John O'Keefe's house, when John O'Keefe is lying out in the snow. Okay, tell us. He's been hit. Okay. He's got a cracked head. Mm -hmm. He's got internal yeah. organ damage. He's dying of hypothermia. Because mm -hmm. he was left out there in the cold, dragged out in the cold. Yep. Yep. There was a fight in the house, dragged out in the cold. You got all that. Yep. Yeah. All right. Let's see where she goes with this. Karen Reed starts worrying about things. Yeah, because John didn't come. About what happened. Now, she doesn't have Jen McCabe's number or another childhood friend of John O'Keefe named Carrie. She doesn't have their numbers. But she wakes John O'Keefe's niece, who does have those numbers. Okay. And she reaches out to Carrie and Jim McCabe. Okay. Because she says John hasn't come home. Mm, yeah. Well, they didn't take John O'Keefe home. Where's John O'Keefe? He was beat up in the so, house. Dragged on the lawn. They end up driving around back mm -hmm. to Brian Albert's location. And in this tremendous right. snowstorm, white out snowstorm. Two inches of snow. Guess who spies? John buried in inches and inches and inches of snow in the middle of. That's not true. That's not true. That looked like a secure crime scene to you. A lot of, lot of, lot of tainted crime scene there. I don't. I, and the funny thing is, she doesn't full. They don't full show the full photo, the full frame. We've seen it. Police cars everywhere. People walking through the scene. Snow blowers, shovels. No crime scene tape. She doesn't show that. No crime scene tape. Of a whiteout snowstorm, you can barely drive underneath piles of snow. Karen Reed. Karen Reed says, Look, he's over there. Mm -hmm. And Karen Reed goes to John O'Keefe. And she tries to give him mouth to mouth re resuscitation. Yeah, she lays warm. on him to try to warm him up. Of course, he's frozen solid. Right. Yep. Because he's out there and left outside. No, no, one is called. The ambulance arrives. Now, a lot of people are upset with how Jen McCabe ends up being recorded on a recording of the 911 call. So it's not the actual 911 call, right, but, it, tells but you what uh, it is recorded from a device, part of it. Right. And they're upset with the fact, I think, that she's not hysterical. Jen McCabe is not hysterical. Well, she should be. Two things on this. First, she's involved in it. Jen McCabe knows that John O'Keefe is lying there in the snow. She's Googling how long to die in snow. Sure She's just trying to process all of this. How did this happen? You know, she went to bed at past. She speaks for Jen McCabe now. She speaks for Jen McCabe. That's interesting. <laughs> One in the morning. It's now the early morning hours, just hours later. It's dark. It's a blizzard. She's just trying to, what is happening? She calls 911. And I can tell you, some people under stress, like Karen Reed, 
was hysterical from all accounts. She was hysterical because I think Karen Reed knew exactly what happened to John O'Keefe. She knew John O'Keefe was dead. Out of that house. She knew she hit him. She knew she left him out there all night. So Jim McCabe makes this she call, knew. the ambulance arrives. And when the ambulance arrives, and actually before the ambulance arrived, Karen Reed actually explained to Karen and Jim McCabe why her taillight was broken. Am I, did I hit him? I might have hit him. I think I could have hit him. Did I hit him? We're going to show you some different clips of Karen Reed. And remember, what did I say about this theory? What did I say about this theory? The Did, did I hit him? Could I have hit him? Ready? I shot the clerk. At what point did you shoot the clerk? I shot the clerk. Yes, when did you shoot him? I shot the clerk. Remember that. Reed admitting, believing she hit him, and even saying something to her parents and them <clears throat> indicating that sure enough, she had said, Dad, I think I struck something. On scene, when the medical EMTs arrive there, happening. what does Karen Reed you. say? I hit him, I hit him, I hit oh. him. I hit him, I hit him, I hit him. That's going to be the testimony. Is that what she said? Were you there, Jen? Is that is that what is that what Karen said? You know for a fact that's how Karen reacted? You know for a fact? EMTs arrived there. What does Karen Reed say? I hit him, I hit him, I hit him. I hit him, I hit him, I hit him. That's going to be the testimony. People might not That's like the said. testimony. That's how she said People it. People might want to say, "Oh, she said, did, did I hit about a, a question? I hit him. You're saying that I hit him. I hit him. I, the, my cousin Vinny hit him. I hit him. I hit him. No." That's not going to be the testimony. That's not going to be the, the testimony. testimony is going to be. I hit she him knows. now. Some people don't like the fact. I think she's trying to convince herself with her own lies. That this EMS person was at a beach party, I believe six years prior with a child of one of the Alberts. They, they don't like that. Think about all the times you've been invited to a wedding graduation ceremony, a beach party, and there are hundreds of people there and you don't know any of them. You, you could even be in the wedding and not know the other people in the wedding, right? You're a college buddy and then, and then the groomsmen you don't know. This happens all the time, this case. Yes, and the samples were mis uh, mysteriously lost. is so interesting in my years of experience. It's the yeah. only time yeah. I have seen lies, <laughs> false assertions, oh. made up information, oh. conjecture, speculation oh. Oh. be spun into a ridiculous conspiracy that, by the way, would involve the Canton Police Department, Massachusetts yep. State Police. Yep. The ATF, the yep. Boston Police Department, yep. Canton Police yep. and Fire Department, the District Attorney's Office, yep. the Medical Examiner's sure. Office. So all, everybody has to be complicit, plus all the people in that house. All the people in that house. And everybody has to keep this huge secret, too. Huge secret. Oh, God. Stop. And what was the secret that's been concocted? That John O'Keefe was dropped off that night that John O'Keefe went into Brian Albert's house. Now she's spitting facts. Here's the facts now, ready? Now she's spitting facts. And that every person in that house began beating him mercilessly. Mm -hmm. They beat him bad enough to crack his skull. Yep. Then they brought their dog in on, on it and said, bite the arm, sick him. Yeah, does she not see, uh, you know, Casey brings up a good point here too. Did she not see all the investigations, the... Uh, the CDL scam that just dropped, what, a couple of weeks ago, about what, maybe two months ago, a month and a half ago. Did she not see that uh, with the Mass State Police? <laughs> Did she pay attention to any of the uh, politics here in Massachusetts? And then after he laid there dead, supposedly this happened in his basement. Exactly. No. They brilliantly, an ATF agent 
and a Boston police officer to cover up this horrible crime of beating somebody to death, a fellow police officer. Mm -hmm. They drug him out yep. and threw him in the front yard. Sure did. That, that was the way to cover all of this up. Let's beat him up, let's kill him, and then let's throw him out in the front yard. That way nobody will ever pin it on us. When I first heard it, I thought it was made up, but I'm not making it up. This is the conspiracy that's been concocted. He's not making it up. Now let's get to motive because they're concocted motive. There's no motive. What? Ask, tell me, what is the, if someone could give me a clear motive of why Karen Reed would kill, magically just kill John O'Keefe. There's, there's no money involved. He wasn't leaving any money to her. They're not married. There's no insurance policy. So you're going to say and make something up that, why? Because they had uh, relationship fights. They had, they had fights in their relationship. That's what you're going to say, that Karen Reed just magically goes out one night and says, this is the night that I'm going to get him. This is where I'm going to get him. And uh, I'm going to drop John off and I'm going to back over him and, and just take off. This is the night that we're going to do it. And we saw the body language of the, what, 10 second video of them in the bar together. And Karen and John are laughing. They're with friends. They're having a good time. But within that that time, uh, she magically just flips on the dime. Dr. Jekyll comes out and uh, says, this is the night that I'm going to do it. The plan has all lined up to this night. I, I find that very hard to believe. It is really interesting. One of the people they say was involved was a 17-year-old. Now, this 17-year-old was a football player. And he had a budding career. He had a scholarship. He was going off to college to play was, I should say. His life has been ruined because of people accusing him of a murder he didn't commit. They say that because sometime earlier, there were beer cans left in John O'Keefe's yard, that they had this big beef. That, that's supposed to be the reason to commit murder because there's some beef over some beer cans, that, because that's all they can seem to find, I guess. Colin Albert, he wasn't even there. He was at the birthday party, but text messages, witness statements from everybody are going to show he was picked up. He was picked up before John O'Keefe and Karen Reed ever pulled their SUV up. Before I love all the jump cuts too. Really bad editing, by the way. Uh, Casey with the five, thank you so much. Says happy birthday. Well, I'm so glad to be here. I got my green on today for St. Patrick's Day. I want to welcome and thank everybody for watching LTL True Crime this morning. We've got about 2,200 people across two platforms. Lots of people on X this morning. 1,500 people watching on X and about 700 here in the chat on YouTube. If you're not subscribed to my YouTube channel and you're watching on X, Come over and find me over there at LTL True Crime. We have a live chat going on. You can join the discussion, and uh, I really, really do appreciate it. We're going to get through the rest of the stream, and then I'm going to head out and do uh, my birthday plans today. Uh, I can't wait. I'm going to go have a fabulous dinner tonight in great company, and I'm looking forward to that. So uh, thank you all for taking part of this stream. I really do appreciate it. All right, let's keep playing on here and get this rappy to dap dap up. He was ever hit. <clears throat> He was gone. And they're going to have cell phone records. They're going to have witness statements, as I mentioned, that show he was never even there. Let me, let me also put to bed one of the other concerns of the conspiracy theorists, okay? So one of the other concerns is that a guy named Lucky Lofgren, who was the snowplow driver that, again, this was a huge blizzard. And he was supposed to be clearing the roads, trying to make things clearable, right? Because snow was coming down in spades all over John O'Keefe, by the way. So he has the plow he's bringing through. He was interviewed. He wasn't interviewed early on due to the fact that somebody else was interviewed with the plow company that said we didn't plow there that day. That made sense to police since... There was a lot to plow. You would usually concentrate on the main thoroughfares. But in fact, Lucky Lawfern did apparently run his plow down Fairview, where Brian Albert's house was. Now, he says he didn't see a body. Well, guess what? No one from the house saw a body. They exited 
the opposite side of the house from where the body was. It's a driving snowstorm. It's freezing outside. So if you're leaving the house and getting into your car that's completely on the other side in a driveway, you're going to be running to your car. You're not going to be perusing the front yard. In fact, one of the people did say, gosh, I thought I saw something over there, but then I didn't think anything of it. Lucky Lawfren doesn't see it. Well, Lucky Lawfren shouldn't see it. He should be concentrating on plowing the road he's supposed to be plowing. You realize that when you're a plow guy, and I know this actually because I talked to my dad about this the other night. So my dad, um, and my dad is watching. Hi, dad. Um, and I'm going to talk about a conversation that we had the other night. We talked about plowing. My dad did that for many, many years. My dad was a, a truck driver, dirt hauler, uh, helped build, I uh, the big dig and did many, many projects around Boston. Uh, I remember going out when I was a kid with him and going out and, and loading up heavy equipment on trailers, you know, like backhoes and stuff like that, bulldozers. And he would take me and I would get to sit in between his, uh, and, and actually drive the equipment. So it was pretty cool. Um, but my dad did plowing for many, many years. You don't have to, you have, people have to understand plowing is, a, is, you have to have all your sense in your um, uh, your senses going at that time. Eyes and ears are very important with plowing. One, you don't want to hit a fire hydrant. You don't want to hit the curb. You don't want to hit someone. You don't want to hit uh, a car, anything like that in the road. So you have to be paying attention at all times when you're plowing. He was discussing that. And I just think it's funny that Coppendaffer says, well, he's just, uh, you know, he'd be concentrating on uh, plowing snow. Yeah, you d- yeah, you should. That's what you're doing. That's your job. But you're looking at everything else around you. You're making sure you don't hit a hit someone's, uh, you know, curb or their landscaping or anything like that uh, when you're doing any type of plowing. So I find it hard to believe. She said he wouldn't be aware of anything that would be around him. It's, it's further from the truth. <clears throat> you should be making sure uh, that he does his job. Do you know how many mailboxes are hit by snowplow drivers because they, in fact, concentrating on the road in front of them and their blade gets out wider and they take out mailboxes it's a lot i did a lot of research on this because because people were trying to make a big deal about the fact that lucky lawfren didn't see the body nobody saw the body it was underneath snow it was a driving snowstorm it was bad it was bad it was cold and people were trying to get into their cars and lucky lawfren was doing his job now the other thing lucky lawfren says is that there was a vehicle that was parked in front of Brian Albert's house in the early morning. He even states what kind of vehicle he thinks it might be and that it's gray. Now, why do conspiracy theorists love this? Well, they love this because the kind of vehicle that he named was actually a vehicle that was owned by the Albert's brother, Brian Albert's brother, and was sometimes driven by his brother's son, Colin. Only problem with it, that vehicle is black. Now, the mystery car that Lucky Lawfren thought was there, it's never, ever been figured out. Let's just say he saw a vehicle. You got Lori, uh, Lori over on X, 2,300 people watching right now. And for some reason, Elon Musk, I love you. You've been pushing my platform on X. I have over 1,600 people watching on X right now. So thank you, Elon Musk. I love your platform. Uh, about 700 here on YouTube, but Lori's chiming in on Twitter and says, ha ha ha, the mailboxes is totally different than a body. The storm was not uh, that bad. And I obviously don't think Jennifer's been in a New England storm up here in Massachusetts, but uh, what we saw on that night is pretty much common, very low level storm that night. And I probably remember the snow probably <laughs> melted a couple of days after, because that's usually what we get here in Massachusetts. All right, we have a couple more minutes here. Uh, on this birthday stream, this coffin daffer, uh, why she says that John O'Keefe never went inside 34 Fairview. Again, just an opinion and a reaction stream here. Uh, we'll get this button up and head out for the day. Thank you all so much for being here on this St. Patrick's Day Sunday. All right, let's go. There. Maybe it was parked there and it was a guest of somebody else in one of the other houses. Now, this, by the way, is in the early morning hours, but, you know, it's possible. Conspiracy theorists say, oh, yeah, we're going to put a Ford Edge there to block the view of the body. Uh, No, it's coming from quite a distance when you look at these pictures. From the front door, they drug the body out, these people, 
John O'Keefe was a big man, yep. well over six foot tall. Yep. He was stout. He was a police officer. He was well-trained and he was in good shape. It would take a, a dead body is dead weight. It is very difficult to drag. So it would take numerous two to three men to drag him out and brilliantly drop him in the front yard by the curb, the curtilage of their front yard. Curtilage. A Ford Edge isn't gonna hide that. It's gonna be seen. If there were ring cameras at other locations, it's gonna be seen. Now that's another big question here is the ring camera. Where's that footage? Well, I can tell you I have a ring camera and my ring cameras work from very specific advantages. You can't see every square inch of my yard or backyard or side yards with the ring camera. Now there was one across the street that apparently looked forward to the house. And again, there's no footage that I've been made aware of of these individuals dragging the body out. There's also library footage that the conspiracy theorists love to make a big deal about. There's a library that you could drive by to get from the bar area to get to Fairview. But those videos are A, motion detected, so it would depend on exactly if their motion detector picked it up or not. What way did Karen Reed actually drive back to John O'Keefe's house? This case is going to trial in April. I think you tried it. By the grace of God. The judge has been amazing on this case. The only thing I don't understand is why Judge Canone has not issued a gag order and protective order on everything in this case. I'm guessing if she ever, ever has a case like this, she will in the future because this case has been, the only word I know to describe it is the facts have been completely bastardized. By you bastardized and, By you. and it's hurt a lot of people. Let's first talk about the O'Keefe's. The O'Keefe's have been absolutely maligned, disparaged, yelled at, screamed at, called names, threatened in social media and in person at the courthouse steps where they go to listen to the hearings pertaining to their dead son. <laughs> music again. Sounds like a lot of... It sounded like a lot of repeated piped-in sound effect. It was like on a loop. You notice that? It sounded like it was on a loop. Let's play that again. Oops. Where they go to listen to the hearings pertaining to their dead son. <laughs> their beloved dead son, the father to two children, a brother. Some people think that I'm somehow employed, I don't know, paid, hooked up to the DA in this situation because there was an email he sent me. It's, it's pretty funny. It just said, thank you for advocating on Twitter. It, they didn't say advocating, I think, uh, for putting forth the truth on Twitter, because at that point, nobody was. Advocating. And I called and left a voice message, basically just said, no problem. I go where the truth leads me. In this case, I'm telling the truth on my Twitter. Mm. Uh, and, you know, but, good luck with the case. But when we spit facts, we're the liars. But you're okay. You're vindicated. But when we spit facts, you're we're the liars. And so because there's a voicemail Double message speed. or an email, they try to make so much out of it. I'm involved with this case for one reason. And that is to advocate for the O'Keefe's and for the Albert family and for the McCabe family. So who laid it all out. She's for them. And I'm sure that she's having many, many, many conversations with the McCabe's and the McAlberts. Have been viciously accused of murdering John O'Keefe. I've always found it interesting, though, that nobody seems to be naming Brian Higgins, who was also there the whole night, by the way, and would have been there during this horrible murder. I don't know. They seem to want to stay away from the ATF. Not everybody. I mean, some say that, yes, 
but everyone in the house was responsible. And that's the other group I'm advocating for. It galls me that Colin Albert, a 17 year old kid has been hung up to dry, has been disparaged. <laughs> I can't even imagine a 17 year old kid being accused of murder, being taunted. No one's accused him of murder. Abused on social media and in person. I, I just, I don't know, by adults, by adults, not by other kids, not bullied by other kids, bullied by adults oh, to bullying. the point that he um, didn't go and, and play football. Hopefully he will in the future, but we know that the advocates uh, for Karen Reed would go to sporting events of kids and taunt and harass. Bang, bang. And he just wasn't up for that on a brand new football team being called a murderer. And I don't, I don't blame him. That's why my presence is here on this yeah, case. You're right, Olivia. For the O'Keefe's, the Alberts, the McCabe's, and, and really just succinctly for truth. John O'Keefe deserves truth in this case. Yeah. So does Karen. Anyway, oh. until next time, thanks for tuning in. Creepy. And may justice be served. Yes. Okay. okay. <laughs> there you have it. There you have it. Jennifer Coffindaffer chiming in, chiming in, giving us her expert opinion. When she says it, it's fact. When we say the truth, we're conspiracy theorists. We're, you know, sons of bitches, all this stuff. We're the ones that are taunting. We're the ones that are not spitting facts. But when she does it, it's the truth. It's the truth. And I, the dramatic music, uh, all, all the uh, the exorcist music when they had Karen Reed up there. Ah, oh, I mean, it just really pulls in that effect. I can't wait. And I hope TB does a reaction video on uh, reaction to this video as well, too. I'd love to hear what his insight is. And I'm sure this is going to be dissected through the whole uh, free Karen Reed movement, the uh, free Karen Reed uh, streamers out there that, that talk about this case. I'm sure they're going to dissect this and go through it. And again, uh, Coffin Dapper, if you're watching, if you are watching, and if Melanie Little is watching, I will host both of you to come together and have a conversation about this case. I would love to do it for both of you. We have a neutral ground. You can use my channel for that platform. And uh, gosh, that would be great. But I definitely want to see TB do a reaction on this as well too. So TB, if you're watching, do a reaction. Uh, let's see what you have to say about this. I'm sure you'll come up with a really great stream. And uh, yeah, I think that's about it. So happy uh, St. Patrick's Day to everybody out there. Happy birthday to all the birthday people out there. Today is my birthday. I am now 46 years old on this amazing, great planet, sometimes amazing, great planet, but I'm uh, 46 today. I'm not ashamed to say it. Uh, I'm proud of what we've accomplished here on this platform. It's only going to get bigger. In about two weeks, I will be moving into, uh, on April 1st, my first YouTube studio. Uh, I'm like, I just want to make sure that everybody's clear on this. It's not going to be jumping in and, and going live on the first day. It's going to take me a little while to build it out, get the concept together of what I want to actually do in that room, in that space. Uh, but it's going to give me the freedom now to do solo streams like this one-on-one. -on -one, and I can actually start having live guests in joining the studio. Oh, it's going to just up, up the ante, bring the content to a, another higher level. And I cannot wait. And I couldn't do that with all of your support, without all of your support uh, here on LTL True Crime. It's been an amazing uh, year. I mean, really an amazing year. Uh, I've been on the platform about three years, but my channel really started taking off about a year ago uh, with the help of all of you coming here and watching all of these stories that I cover. I really do appreciate it. And if you're first time over here, please make sure to subscribe, comment down below and send a like on the stream. We had about 2,500 people across both platforms today. Uh, 1,800 right now actively watching on Twitter. That's insane. Uh, thank you, Elon Musk. I appreciate it. But if you're not subscribed here on the YouTube channel with about 700 people in the chat, come over here and subscribe. I would love it. And uh, thank you. Thank you all for being here. I appreciate you all. Tonight at 7 p.m., I will have a premiere. 
That will be the reactionary stream that the glare and myself in TB did on his platform uh, the other day to Karen's last hearing. So if you want to come over and chat in that chat, you can. It's not live. It is a replay. And then tonight, please keep in mind, 9 p.m. Eastern Standard Time, Turtle Boy will be back live. He had some problems with his computer yesterday, but go over and support his stream. I do appreciate it. Thank you all so much. I hope you all have an amazing day. I ran a little bit later than I wanted to, but I got to go. I'm going to go see my mom. I'm going to go uh, hang out and have dinner with uh, an awesome person that I've been spending a lot of time with. And thank you so much for your support because I could not have done this without you. You have pushed me to leaps and bounds. You've been uh, an amazing supporter of me, uh, of my platform, of everything in adventures that I've been wanting to do in life. And I appreciate that. And dad, I'm going to come see you soon. I promise. I promise. I promise. And um, it's been awesome. Such an awesome ride. My my last uh, uh, two months of my life have been just awesome. So, all right, everybody, I'm going to get out of here. Thank you all so much for watching. Make sure to subscribe down below. We're going to do the long intro outro for tonight, and I'll see you all soon. Thank you for the support. I'll be back live on Monday talking, talking uh, the Sandra Birchmore case. And we're going to have a special guest, Mizzy on, that runs the Justice for Sandra group. Come over and watch the stream. It'll be live at 8 p.m. Eastern Standard Time. All right, everybody, we're out of here. Have a good day. Drink some green beer, damn it. Bye. So it appeals we're the only ones fighting for the truth of what happened to John O'Keefe. And me and my family and my attorneys and my team have marshaled every resource to get to the truth. It just feels like no one else wants it. And Karen, just to be clear, you didn't do it. We know who did it, Steve. We know. And we know who spearheaded this cover-up. You all know. Yes, we do. And no, she didn't do it. No, she didn't do it. This is an innocent woman. She didn't do it. I tried to save his life. Yeah. I tried to save his life at six in the morning. I was covered in his blood. I was the only one trying to save his life. Why do you admit to it? He didn't, she didn't admit to it. She didn't admit to anything close to that. Nothing close to that. And you should know that. Sounds like three or four times she admitted to it. No, no she didn't. that's not true. She asked a question. It makes absolutely no sense. That is the Commonwealth grasping at straws. If it walks like a duck, and talks like a duck, it's a duck. We have the eight letters. We've seen them. We've read them. We are using them. The genie cannot be put back in the bottle. Yeah, LTL true crime. We going deep in the dark. Yeah, yeah peeling back the layers, expose the hidden mark. Oh, yeah. From the streets to the alleys where the secrets lie. Get in into minds of the wicked, no alibi. LTL true crime unraveling the web of evil. No stone left unturned, we diving to the prime. Yeah, we digging up the dirt, bringing justice to the crime. LTL true crime unveiling dark realities every time. Yeah, LTL true crime, we going deep in the dark. Yeah, peeling back the layers, exposed to him more. Oh, yeah. From the streets to the alleys where the secrets lie. Get it back to mind, something wicked, no alibi. <laughs> Hey, I think they true crime Who do it dark realities every time Every time. Yeah, LTL true crime.